I think I'm going to have to build myself a bubble etch tank. This is taking too long. So, so far what we've got, I've uh, taken this uh, Ferrero Rocher chocolate box and I've epoxied all the sides, epoxied the bottom as well, got some masking tape on there. Masking tape is just so I can actually draw and mark prior to cutting and it makes it a lot easier. But uh, I've just done a water test in it and uh, it's now totally 100% waterproof. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go on to mark out the areas to fit the uh, thermometer and heater and also the pump. What I'm also going to be using is an old desktop PC power supply as a uh, project case and in there I'm going to wire up the pump and the heater so I've just got the one plug coming in and it's already got a hole so I'll just have to make that a little bit bigger to put the heater through and hopefully when I've got it all together I'll mount it on a piece of ply and it'll all come together like that so I'm now going around using my uh, drill bit, kind of like a knife. So there it is, and now we'll go in with the rotary tool and smooth all this edge off. So what I'm uh, hoping to do is we'll have the heater mounted through there like so and I've got this plastic rod, it's hard plastic so it should be easier for me to seal up the hole that I'm going to use to cut in through there and then feed some flexible plastic hose to the pump is I want it to go all the way along and I'm going to drill, I'm not going to melt, drill little holes all the way along there using a uh, PCB size drill bit and this I'll actually glue to the end of this wall and then air will feed in and hopefully up through the bubbles so it will be positioned just above the heater in there So what I've put around these is some plumber's tape which is a PTFE threaded seal tape and I'm hoping that will help give me a nice watertight bond seal around these so hopefully this as well as some epoxy and uh, we won't have any uh, liquid leaking out. Ok let me show you what I've done so far then. Um, originally, as you know, this was a uh, Ferrero Rocher box and I epoxied all the sides up and what I did, I cut the top off with a rotary tool and I'm going to use that as my lid and I've taken some thin plastic, it's actually off a uh, binder and glued it to the inside so makes a nice tight fitting lid. I've also um, got 
bought one of these wooden handles from a local hardware shop, I think it was about 50 pence. I haven't fitted it on properly yet, I just want to see if, how it fits. So, I've got a nice handle there as well. Um, also, what I wanted to show you was how I'm actually going to hold the PCBs in the ferric chloride. Now, at work, uh, I use a uh, spray etch tank and um, I'm building this because I do more and more at home. I mean, especially uh, during school holidays, I don't get access to it. And sometimes I'll get an idea and I want to etch, etch something here in the workshop. And especially at this time of year, it's far too cold to etch anything just in a uh, Tupperware tub, shall we say. And the spray etch tank I use at work is actually a lot like this. It's flat and it's got plastic screws that you tighten up and move these kind of things up and down to hold. I've got a piece of scrap circuit board here to hold the circuit board in place in the spray etch tank. So what I did, I found these, which is uh, connects, and it's got a nice little ridge in it already, so the circuit board will f fit in there. And I don't even have to um, have any screws or anything holding this, I can just pull that down and it holds it in place fine. Like so. And hopefully, I've got uh, several smaller ones, I can put another one up in there. So, that's how I intend to hold it in the etch tank itself. So, what I'm going to do, I've drilled a couple of holes here in the lid, and once I've got it at the correct height, I'm going to glue them in to the top of the lid. So, that is actually all just one unit then, lifting in and out. So what I decided to do, because I don't want two plugs um, coming out the back of this, taking two sockets up, I'm going to, like I said before, use this old um, PC power supply case, the project box, and I put an extra an extra switch in there, one for the uh, pump, one for the heater, because I want the heater to come on for, say, five minutes before to warm the uh, ferric chloride up, and then switch the pump on. So what I'm going to do is use an old kettle lead, um, the tank that goes into the back of a PC and I'm going to power these off that one lead. So that's what I'm going to do there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it all together and then uh, finish painting it, make it look a bit more uh, tidier. And um, Oh, one last thing. This is the uh, base, it's a piece of MDF, I'm going to be mounting all this directly onto there and on the bottom I've got some of this foam stuff like I have here on my work mat, it uh, should help it be non-slippy. One last thing that I want to show you before I go and put all this together is you really need one of these um, one-way flow valves to stop uh, ferric chloride when you turn the pump off it uh, can seep back down the pipe and into your pump itself and obviously that will cause quite a few problems um, they're only about £1.50 and this seems to hurt, there's a little arrow saying the air flows that way so you really need one of those if you're going to build this so I'm going to put it all together and then uh, add some paint and then we'll have a look at it and see how well it performs so here it is, all finished and painted, and it's up and running. I've already etched one board so far, and that's that one there. It's come out really well. It only took about six minutes, where when I was using a Tupperware dish, it used to take about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm really pleased with that. I've got a slightly bigger board in there at the minute, see how well that does. And um, the only thing I probably would change with it is uh, get a slightly more powerful air pump. It just doesn't seem to blow bubbles all the way along like I, I wanted it to. But other than that, I'm quite pleased with it. So, this is part one of um, a two-part episode. And on the next episode, I'm going to be showing you the two different techniques that I use to get the uh, artwork onto a circuit board ready for etching. And uh, 
I hope you get something out of that. Also, how I built my uh, light box. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. And if you enjoyed this one, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'll uh, see you next time.